I've been asked to give an example of a scenario where you would use a book page in the middle of a simulation. I've got a very simple example here that I'm going to go through just to show you the, how to do that and then we'll look at some more capabilities with book pages and animations while we're doing that. So I have a super simple simulation here with just a couple of steps in it that I want to put my book page in the middle of. So my first step, I'm in an S4 HANA system, I click Accounts Payable. The next step, I click on the Overdue Payables tile and then we go off with the rest of our simulation. Now at this point, what I want to do before they click on this Overdue Payables tile, I want to explain this stuff that's on it. I could just insert bubbles here, explanations, and explain it that way. But let's say I think that's a bit too small, and I really want to blow it up so it's a bit bigger and the users can see the information and then explain it. So that's what we're going to do. So I want to put a book page in front of this step three. So I will go to here, insert book page. That gives me my new book page, nothing on it, no title, no nothing. Um, the key information here is this book page property. This tells you which book page you want to display. And unfortunately, you can only, ex uh, only select an existing book page. So we're going to have to wait at this point. I'm going to save just in case. Always a good idea. And I'm going to go and create the book page that I'm then going to load into here. Now, before I do that, in fact, let me go straight to here. Um, in the same folder, I'm going to create a new book page. And I'm going to call this Overdue payables tile okay so that's going to give me a new book page um, I don't like the layout of this this doesn't really matter because I'm going to cover this with stuff but if you want it completely blank use standard now I want to show this particular screenshot in the book page so I need to do a couple of things firstly I need to note the size of it which is 1440 by 873 and I want to take a copy of that so I'm going to come into here and I'm going to copy that image, 1440 by 873. So in my book page, I need to set this to be exactly the same, 1440 times 873. Okay, so now I have a book page that's exactly the same size as the simulation. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste that, that object image right onto here. Okay, so this is now my screenshot that I want to zoom in on. And if I go look at the objects, I've now got this as image one, which I will call full screen shot. It's always a good idea to rename everything so that you've got names that you can understand and relate to later. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste another copy of that on top. OK, so now I've got this image one and this is going to be my cropped version. OK, and no surprises, I'm going to crop this down. This button here, which is called replace image, but there's a lot of things you can do with an image. And one of the things is crop it. So I'm going to crop this down. I'm going to zoom all the way down to just the tile. That's the only bit I want to focus on. OK, so I'm going to crop this down on all sides, get it in as, ex as exact as I can. Um, the reasons for which will be obvious in a minute. So I've cropped that all the way down confirm that so I've now got this image here I really want it to be exactly over there so I'm going to zoom in a bunch to this and get that as close to exact on here that I can and you can use the cursor keys just to bump it a little and that looks to be about right okay so now that is good I can check if that's okay I can quickly hide it and show it and if it doesn't look as though it's jumping I know it's in the right place okay so I've now got my screenshot in the background here and over the top of that I've got this and this is what I want to zoom in so to get something to zoom in I am going to add an animation object to it okay so this is the finishing point of the animation of the thing that I'm going to animate in so I want to make sure that this is effectively the same proportions as our tile so I'm going to drop it over the tile and drag it and as I drag it it's going to snap to the borders of or the boundaries of the object behind it so now from here I can drag this out and make it as big as I want I'm holding down the shift key as I drag so it keeps the the ratio of the the length to the width and let's say I want it this big and I want it right in the middle of the screen you can see you've got those blue dotted lines um, on the middle point so I'm going to drop that right there 
Now, this animation object, I have to say what I want to animate on my page. And what I want to animate is what I specify in target object, and that is my cropped screenshot. So this means when I start this animation, it's going to take that object there and it's going to put it in this position at this size. So it's effectively going to zoom in on that. Okay, I can change the duration if I want. I'm going to leave everything as one second just so you're not sat here waiting for stuff to happen. Um, Easing is a tricky one. Um, I do have an example out there of a video of that on the YouTube channel somewhere. Um, search on easing you'll find it okay so that's my animation now what I also want to do is I want to put a few um, bubbles on top of that to explain stuff now the downside of this is that I can't see the finished object so if I s insert a bubble into here say I want to point something out I'm kind of guessing where it is so I'm gonna cheat I'm gonna take a copy of this again I'm gonna paste it on top of everything and make it the same size as my animation because then I can see what I'm pointing to so now I'm just going to populate a few of these Okay, so now I've got my callouts on there that I want to show to the users. So I'm going to delete this one that I put over the top, making sure that I'm taking away the right one. So they're now going to point to the right place when this is um, when this has been animated in. So a couple of things I need to do. I want to introduce these one at a time just to add a bit of variety to it. So to be able to do that, I'm going to have to use a time control. Okay. So I've got a time control here, and I'm going to call this page animation. Okay. Um, again, I like to call things something sensible. So when we start this animation here, that's going to take one second. Okay. And let's say I'm going to start that one second into the page being displayed. Um, so once a page has been displayed for one second, I want it to basically start my animation one which is this thing here, and I should have called it something better. So let's call it blow up screenshot. Okay, so here, um, blow up screenshot, I'm gonna start that at one second. Then I wanna introduce these one at a time. Um, you can see I gave them um, sensible names. So let's say I'm gonna do all three of those. Um, and so one second, that's gonna do that. So let's say two seconds, we are going to show the critical one. So critical, we are going to fade that in, which is going to take a second. Three seconds in, we are going to fade in the non-critical one. So non-critical, fade in. And at four seconds, we are going to fade in this last one down here, which is showing the refresh time. And we'll fade that in. Because we want to fade them in, we want them to be not visible to start with. So I'm then going to have to go and hide them here. Okay. So um, for the fun of it, what we will also do is basically close everything out and get it to look the way it was before we exit. So I want to basically scale this all the way down again. So I'm going to insert another animation and I'm going to drop that one exactly where we started out right over our initial tile location. Now, I'm also going to set this to be our cropped screenshot as well. So when this animation starts, what it's going to do cleverly is it's going to take that object, our cropped screenshot, from the last place it was on the screen. So it's already been pushed out to here, so it's basically going to zoom back in. And that animation there is we'll call zoom out. And we're going to do that as the last thing, basically to tidy up everything when we finish here. OK? So at time five, and let's say we give them a couple of seconds to look at everything. So let's say at six seconds in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to zoom out. I'm going to start that animation and I'm just going to hide everything else as well. So I'm going to hide the critical one. I'm going to hide the non-critical one. So we basically just want to remove all of those from the screen and the refresh time I'm going to hide as well. All right, so that should do things more or less. A couple of more things I want to do. 
And firstly, when I zoom in on this, I basically want to kind of like fade out the background on this just so it looks a bit nicer. So, and it, it really focuses their attention on what they're doing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a rectangle. I'm going to make that the exact same size as the entire screen. Then back in here, I don't want a border on it, so I'm going to set that to zero. The shape color, I'm going to set to white. And the opacity, I how much you can see what's behind it, I'm going to set to 70%. Okay, so that's going to kind of fade things. But I really only want that to be over the full screenshot. So over here in the objects, I'm going to drag that object and I'm going to put it here. So now everything else will be visible over the top of it. Um, but this is going to fade stuff out. I'm going to hide that because what I want to do here is when we blow up our screen at the same time, our rectangle, which I should have called something sensible, I'm going to animate that in. And then at the end, when we finish with everything, we're zooming out. That rectangle I am going to animate out as well. Now, just about every object has a set of animation properties in here. You can choose how it fades in or whether it fades in out, flies, whatever else, and it has a duration as well. And you can change those to make it take as long as you like for it to fade in or out. But now we should be good, apart from one last thing. I always emphasize this because people always forget. I need to trigger this page animation. It's not enough to set up a time control. Something needs to say, okay, go start this now. And that thing, I'm clicking on the outside here to select the page, or I could just click down here. On the page, under Actions, there is an On Page Loaded. I, when that page has been loaded onto the screen, do these things. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my page animation. Okay, and that's why I called it Page Animation, because it makes sense. On Page Loaded, Start Page Animation. Okay, so now that has everything on it that I think we need. Let's just test it to make sure it looks okay. So preview, zooms in, fades out, then it brings those bubbles in, then it hides everything and it zooms back to here and we're done. Perfect. Okay, so that all works. One last thing I need to pay attention to. All of this is going to take six, seven seconds, okay? So bear that in mind because the problem is there's no way at the end of the book page being displayed to say, okay, we finished with this book page, close this out now and go back to the simulation. You need to basically go to the next step in the simulation. So this is all good now, okay? I'm going to save this. It's called Overdue Payables Tile. Close it down. Back in my simulation now, I've got my book page object in here and I can select my Overdue Payables Tile. This is the one I created. So I'm going to select that. Now, how long is this going to display for? Remember I said there's six seconds for everything to happen and then we're going to give it an extra second just before we end. So let's set this to seven, set it to eight seconds. So this page will be displayed for eight seconds. Now just to clarify what's going on and again because it's good practice I'm going to put some information in here. I'm going to call this step one. The book page I'm going to call step two. And this last step, the next thing they go on to, where they click on this, remember, I'm going to call that step three. And then the last thing where it basically ends, I'm going to call step four. Okay, so that's all just to clarify what happens when we play this back. So I'm going to preview this now. I could do it by clicking this button here, but to preview from a particular step, um, you can just double click on whatever mode you've got selected here. It's going to play back in that. So I'm going to double click on step one. That is basically going to play it back. And now let's see what happens. So this is in um, demo mode. We, um, I'm not touching anything. It clicks on accounts payable. Now, step two, our book page has kicked in. And it goes through everything on the book page. It fades everything out again. One or two seconds later, closes down. And now we're on to step three, back in our simulation. And we can carry on. And we're done. There you go. 100% automatic. All you see in there is which I've now lost. All you see is the book page coming in and it looks like it's part of the simulation, but magically we're zooming in on stuff. We're bringing in different elements on a timer and things like that. And then we're jumping back to the simulation. The user doesn't even know that they've dropped out of the simulation into a book page and back again because it's all the same project. So there you go. I know it's a very simple use case and it's probably not a hugely realistic one, but it shows you what can be done. 
Hope you appreciate that. Go have fun with it. Thanks for watching.